Mr. Bernardi Menervino, the floor is yours. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. I thank our guests. Guests. And we want to share with you the subject matter of certification. This is one of the strongest appreciate programs. It was born as a program for farming. But the message we want to convey today is that certification can only can also be used for cattle farming. And we are also working in order to be able to apply it to fa cattle farming as a whole, even to feedlot cattle breeding. So our speakers will talk about this issue. Certification is re closely related to sustainability, and our speakers will deal with it. Well, thank you, Raul. I will introduce the first speaker, Andrea Passinato, an agricultural engineer. She has a master in science. She is a coordinator of beef cattle of the national, national program of animal production of INTA. Concepcion del Uruguay and Rios. She is a chair of the Animal Nutrition Department of Agricultural Sciences at Rosario National University. So let's give the floor to Mrs. Persinato, who will talk to about sustainable beef production. Good morning, everybody, and thank you, appreciate for giving us an increasingly more important space in those of us who work in cattle farming. I'm going to share in this point of view of national animal production programs point of view about cattle farming and what it's like to do cattle farming in a sustainable fashion. We base sustainability on three main areas. The first one is an increase in productivity and conversion rates. We also think about quality and safety of the product. And the third one would be sustainability and commitment towards ecosystems of, the, of cattle breeding systems. Of course, sustainability must include these three components, the economic one, the social one, and the environmental one. What, what is the scenario of cattle breeding in Argentina today? And let's see to what extent it is sustainable. There are several systems, cattle farming systems throughout Argentina. So we have breeding in extensive conditions, stocking in different, of different kinds, natural stocking in the fields with a strong increase of feedlot paddock until the stocking stage and most of the beef produced in Argentina it comes from pen finished cattle. So from this has been useful for many farmers from different areas of Argentina but also it has also giving rise to the fact that the main product obtained, especially concentrated in the core area, is lightweight animals geared towards the domestic market with very limited exportable components. Whether this is sustainable in the long term, well, that's a question we should answer. The, and this growth of feedlot, feedlots has created other problems, environmental pollution, especially because many feedlots have been set up in an unorganized fashion, and this has produced contamination in the water tables, in the environment. 
and we should also consider the large amount of effluence and manure we have this question, is this sustainable? To what extent is this sustainable? Though it's true that we have strategies to mitigate and the production of effluents and we may sort of limit them. This is on alert for sustainable cattle farming, and the same happens regarding the quality of the product that comes out of this production system. And we should also bear in mind food safety. We should take into account transportation, the marketing. Our products are sold in half in carcasses. This also produces contamination. Could we be more sustainable in our cattle farming activities? Yes. We believe that the way of becoming more sustainable is by increasing production and production efficiency. So if we produce more in a more efficient fashion, we will be we will improve sustainability, economic sustainability but we will also reduce con contamination, contaminants. There are several ways of tackling this. One way would be by producing animals that are heavier at slaughter, above 400 kilograms. This would enable us to export beef. We have technology, we have information. We know that animals that have a higher weight at slaughter may have the same quality features as a light weight carcass. But we believe that the most important effect or the consequence of having heavier animals at slaughter well, if we have a steer that weighs over 400 kilograms, we should change the stocking chip system. We cannot have do the stocking as we used to do it, the breeding as we used to do it. And here, Stocking or rebreeding in open fields is very important. Grazing, rebreeding would improve sustainability. How? Well, first, there would be no competition with grain production, for example, or with pork production, or with poultry, or biofuels. And stocking natural grassland would play a key role because it would become part of rotation and it would contribute in this way. We know the problems of water table in wet areas. If we use grasslands or cover, cover crops or annual crops for rebreeding, water evaporation would improve and the carbon footprint and the water footprint would drop or become smaller. It's not that what I have already mentioned was more important than this one, but we must become more efficient. We must get a higher number of wind calves, include, increase our productivity so that our cows stop producing only 60 calves per 100 cows to make it up to 80. And this would, of course, help us to have a more sustainable system. Here we have a 380 kilograms animal, a 450 kilograms animal at slaughter. And here we can see 
how the amount of food necessary to produce a steer if we increase the winning rate. If we move from 60, which is the average of cattle farming in Argentina, to 75 or 85, and there is technology to help us out here, and so it can be done. Here we have included all the feed necessary, not only for the steers, but also for the cows, the replenishment of the herd, death rates, etc. And cattle production involves another element which has, which is the buzzword in contamination. Cattle farming accounts for a large amount of production of greenhouse gases, especially methane. And we may do cattle farming in a more sustainable fashion if we produce more because the methane emissions will be smaller by unit of product. A colleague of INTA will teach a workshop on this subject matter. I'm just going to mention this briefly. There are estimates that show that by, if you, by improving the winning rates, we may produce up to 40% fewer, less methane. This can also be achieved by other methods through a better rebreeding, increasing weight gain during re rebreeding, so we would be more sustainable because in whole we would reduce methane uh, emissions. Methane additions, emissions can also be reduced with a better diet. A better diet involves low, lower methane production. And in closing, I'd like to mention that cattle farming may be sustainable from the economic, social, and environmental standpoint. And we believe that the tool to turn it into a more sustainable activity is to increase production and productivity. Thank you very much. We thank Andrea Passinato for her presentation, and now we give the floor to Jorge de Saja. Jorge de Saja is a lawyer and a lobbyist. He's an expert in business or business associations. He has been the head of the Spain, Spanish Confederation of Feed, and he is member of the board of the European Federation, FEFA. He is also a member of the Social and Economic Committee of the Government of Spain, and he is also a member of several other consulting organizations in the public and private arena in Spain and in Europe. So we give the floor to Jorge de Saja who will take the floor now. Thank you. At 13 minutes, I tried to make it there. I'd like to thank Apresid for having given us the opportunity to participate in this event from the European feed industry. Would like to thank you for having invited us Apresid has become a, a reference partner in Argentina, and we are quite aligned on our goals, specifically in what is related to sustainable beef production. I don't think I can make any technical contribution, especially considering there are lots of technical experts here. but. Going back to what the previous speaker said, I'd like to tell you that in order to be sustainable, we need to have environmental sustainability, social sustainability, but without economic sustainability, if sustainable cattle breeding production is not profitable, 
we will not be able to make it. I'd love to have my presentation here at the front, but apparently this is not possible. I am here on behalf of the European Association of Feed Producers. I'm also here on behalf of the National Confederation. And I have three very simple ideas. We all know that sustainable production is a reality. It is becoming increasingly mandatory, and consequently, it is more expensive. In European production terms, we always think of regulatory aspect as a cost. It is an added cost, regardless of whether the law is supposed to meet social needs from a point of view of production. In the European Union, it is becoming very expensive to adjust to the regulatory framework, regardless of whether it is expensive or not. Feed production for cattle has many good stories to tell. There is nothing to be hidden, and quite the opposite. There are lots of very good things that we have not been able to communicate properly. And proof of that is that we, cattle breeding farmers, use some inputs. We buy input from Argentina. So there is a gap between what we do and how what we do is perceived by the general public. Sustainable production contributes value to the chain, but it has to cover the whole chain. The only way to face that pressure coming from the market is to show that the whole chain is implemented with profitability and sustainability criteria. So far, we thought it was a responsibility, and we have not been good enough in communicating what we do. And especially so far, we have not seen that our effort as cattle breeders or feed producers today in Europe, this is involves the same companies and people, the effort of our suppliers. So far, there was a difference between demand and the reward we got out of it. So far, we have not seen any reward. Maybe reward is not the right term, but we were not seeing consumers were rewarding sustainable production. The price was not different from ordinary production, but this is starting to change now. I insist this is not a negative point of view. Sustainability is a responsibility. We all share this responsibility to produce more and better, but if that responsibility does not come with profitability, then it will be very difficult to convince our suppliers, to convince ourselves that producing in a differentiated manner, which we know is good, will be done without an economic reward. In any case, the European industry has decided to face pressure coming from consumers. We have decided to create something that is credible. We have, we had to set some objectives to monitor compliance, and this is the 2030 vision. It includes nutrition, food security. This is quite a difficult topic in the European Union, especially after the crisis we had in the last decade. These are 
all aspects of our reality. We all know what sustainability is. The previous speaker said that we need to find the highest efficiency in the use of resources, the supply of raw material, with a special focus on the environmental footprint. There's nothing new here. As to efficient use of resources, I have decided to include this slide as an example. If in a long term, 40 years, if we take 40 years, we see that the search for efficiency is profitable with a higher conversion rate, with the use of new, ma new raw material. This is just about cattle breeding be a feed. You see that profitability is higher. It's not just premium product will lead to a higher price, and that's not the only advantage of sustainable production. Efficiency already gives you a return on your investment, but this has been like this always. When grocers tell us you have to ensure that your cattle breeding production is sustainable, we know that we have to work along two lines. On the one hand, we have to work on our own production model and we also have to give our, we have to require sustainability from our providers. Argentina is a strategic provider for us. The national commodity production is quite variable, but looking into the future, Argentina is a strategic provider of raw material. May, it might be a strategic beef supplier in the future, too. In August 2015, the whole European industry worked together on soybean, and this is the guideline that was produced. It's not a standard. They're very good standards. We're very happy working with the APRESID standard. It is this is just a guideline that we can use to compare the standard requirements. This standard meets those guidelines that we need to comply with in our raw material management to meet social and regulatory demands. And honestly, this we work together with our providers, so it is it involves reasonable criteria, and they are feasible. You can easily comply with them. We're not requiring them to meet the specific standard, but it is true that gradually the different standards available in the market, well, we compare ourselves to those standards, and we we okay them. Obviously, there are other initiatives in the international market which are worth being assessed. I personally like some programs, such as the British program, the last one on this slide, because it's a quite comprehensive view of sustainability throughout the whole change. The Italian standard is quite good, but it is consumer-centered rather than industry-centered. And the American one is very good, but it's more of a marketing tool. And this is my last slide. So this is just some thoughts I'd like to share with you. This is focused on Argentina. A well-managed sustainability will generate efficiencies. It will help you manage your resources correctly. It might be an opportunity, and it might be an opportunity to say, part of my production 
will be sustainable. Not the whole of my production will be sustainable, but just a part of it I can manage. Maybe sustainability can be part can be applied to part of your production. But we're always talking about scalable strategies. In Europe, sustainability strategy involves lots of differences among countries, among consumer demands. They may be successful or not. We may agree on common standards or not when it comes to raw material management, but we're not able to reach a national strategy. I'm fascinated with Argentina. I come here quite frequently. I love Argentina. And honestly, I'm trying to understand the following. If there is an area in the world where sustainability can be practiced, whether in a niche, in intensive production or extensive production, but if there is an area or a whole country that might implement this, it's Argentina. We have to import between 60 and 80 percent of our protein needs. In the case of Spain, cereals between 40 and 60 percent at best. Argentina is the only country with a cattle breeding capacity that is huge, with direct access to raw material, with great human capital, with great production capacity. It's the only country which I humbly believe can today say, I can focus on sustainability, I can go for it through all the country because sustainable beef production should be in the Patagonia. For example, you have a strong internal demand which may restrict prices and growth capacity, but you have a great asset here. If there is a country that can say, I'm going to have sustainable beef production, then that is Argentina. So sustainability is a reality. We all believe in sustainability. We all believe it contributes something to society. We all know how to do it. But if there is a country that can strategically decide to use it to go for it with profitable results, then it's you. You have everything to do it. It's just a matter of agreeing to do it. Thank you very much. Thank Jorge Sala. Saha for his presentation and before introducing the next speaker I'd like to remind you that for questions there is a phone number on the screen and you may send your questions via an SMS if there is time we'll answer the questions after the last presentation and this is the one that is starting now the one by Victor Tonelli who has a degree in agricultural sciences granted by Universidad Católica Argentina he is also a consultant in the area of cattle breeding and beef production, and he has also worked in the slaughter industry and as a consultant for the holes, for markets, wholesale markets in Argentina and abroad. So this is his is the last presentation of this panel. Good morning, everybody. First of all, I'd like to thank Apreseed for inviting me to participate in this. Meeting. This is the fourth time I address an audience at Apresi. The first time it was a very small room, a room which was two meters by two meters. Then it was a little bit bigger. But this is the first time I address people at such a large venue. And I really feel deeply moved because this used to be the altar of agriculture without any cattle breeding being involved. So I thank Abrecid for this opportunity. My goal today is to describe what is happening with sustainability and cattle farming, and which are the requirements we are receiving regarding the production of sustainable beef production, meeting some protocols which, as time goes by, are becoming mandatory. What we see 
those of us who are analyzing international business, especially in the case of Argentina, which is going back to be an international player, well, consumers are asking or I want to know how beef is produced, processed, and distributed. Well, this applies to food as a whole. And the consumers look for elements which go beyond the productive stage. They are also concerned with social and environmental aspects. An area of focus for us and also of concern for us is this increasing demand related to deforestation, caring for the water, animal welfare, food safety, excess of antibiotics use, the concern with social aspects applying to the workers in the industry and also to the communities in the area where the operations are carried out. So these are many new demands and requirements that call for our deep attention. So one issue which really struck us in one of the first in the first conferences we gave about the production of sustainable beef was a presentation by a McDonald's executive who started his presentation by saying, in the U.S., we have just decided that Uruguay could not be a supplier of food for our stores, though they have food, uh, beef in the market, because consumers think of Uruguay or relate Uruguay to the deforestation of the Amazonian forest. So you hear this and you may do two things. Either you may laugh and say, well, they are really uneducated, or you may think there is really lack of communication. Consumers are not able to understand that Uruguay, it might be Argentina, has other issues, but deforestation of the Amazonian forest is not one of them. So and the executive went on to say, well, last year, two years ago, we made a statement supporting the principles of non-deforestation. But this year, in 2016, we committed to start working with sustainable beef producers. And by 2020, the 10 countries supply beef for our stores will have to produce sustainable beef. And by 2030, we'll only be buying sustainable beef. Let's see what they mean by sustainable beef. But simultaneously, you can see how producing countries, Canada in this case, begin to show the results of their progress to reduce emissions of greenhouse gases. One of the components may be the one that makes the headlines, but it's just one of the components of sustainability. Or, for example, we want safe beef, beef that doesn't cause diseases. This was published by one of the most important or popular magazines read by consumers. The, it says that using too many antibiotics gives rise to bacteria which are very difficult to control in the human health arena. And what is sustainable beef? This definition was already mentioned, but there are three elements, the environmental element, the social element, and the economic one. And the last one is not a minor issue if you want to be sustainable from the business point of view. I'm not going to read the slide. You can do that yourselves. You know what we mean by each of these areas. I think it's important to focus on the five principles which the global table of sustainable beef with members from many different countries has decided or has mentioned as the five main concerns coming from these new requirements posed by society and consumers coming especially from intellectually more advanced countries. 
And these are actually the concerns the world has on this regarding social and environmental issues. But here we have a summary of what farmers do or should do every day. I don't know if you have if you can read this by these five principles mentioned by the global table regarding natural resources. Social elements, people and community, animal health and welfare, food safety, and efficiency, innovation, and technology breakthroughs. When you see this list, and here we see what the round ta beef round table of the U.S. has defined for each category, well, in each case, they define the focus required by the consumers and society in that country below these key principles. And each country adds a special fate in it. This is what the U.S. is focusing on. This is what Canada is focused on. focusing on. Canada in the round tables of sustainable beef is the one that has made more progress together with Brazil. Brazil because they ha have to live with the stigma of Amazonian forest deforestation. And because of this discrimination or not, well, maybe this is the accusing finger of the worldwide society being pointed to them, while Brazil has worked really hard and it has taken a huge advantage vis-a-vis -vis Argentina in this area. They are, have a very good study today. They are ready to provide responses. And again, you have a list here. I'm not going to read it, but it's important to understand that this is an area on which we have to concentrate and work in order to provide responses to the needs and requirements that arise. I know Mr. Vigliso was here on stage yesterday. Andrea and myself talked about his presentation, and I think three elements should be stressed because one of the big issues, among other issues, we have to tackle as, tackle as a society, and especially a cultural industry, is to become to start talking international arena because basically we are talking about emissions, and I believe we should be talking about balances because as cattle farming produces emissions because of the physiology of cattle, simultaneously this is based on grasslands, on prairies, which also give which also sequest do carbon sequestration. Mr. Vigiso talked about this yesterday and he says he gives us the figures and information. I believe that Argentina, Paraguay, and Brazil, because of the grazing system, capture more carbon than the amount of carbon they produce. So one of the tasks of the round of the beef round table and many other organizations are carrying out is well let's stop talking about emissions and let's start talking about balance because emissions is a tool that is being fostered by those countries that produce little carbon capture. We who capture more carbon should be focusing on balances. Now I'm going to tell you what Argentina is doing in the area of sustainable beef production. There was a first meeting a month ago. These were the organizations involved, the, main, the three main slaughterhouses and meat producers of Argentina, the agricultural and cattle breeding organizations who are leaders in this area and appreciate leading the whole group, NGOs that are working in the environmental area, the cattle farming and the secretariat. We worked really in close contact with Pilo Girado, and you know her name, of course. So this was a private, public interaction, partnership, trying to find answers to all these new challenges. And the conclusions of this first meeting, 
digamos, una, un convencimiento de que algo hay que hacer es que... Where well, everybody agreed that, that something sociedad, had to be done is that this issue is on the radar of society and of consumers, not in Argentina to a lesser extent than in other countries, but this issue is becoming increasingly important every day. And the question is, is this a problem or an opportunity? Well, it depends how we consider it. Of course, it's an issue to be tackled, but in the case of a cattle breeding production, the one we have in Argentina, which is sustainable to a great extent and which may become even more sustainable, we believe it's also a huge opportunity. Of course, it's not a requirement, a must yet, but we believe that in the short, in the long term, it will become a must, a requirement. And, well, first, but first we have to define what do we mean by beef production? Well, there is no clear definition. This should be defined by all stakeholders as a whole, but society expects us to be transparent in the information we share, in the way we make the measurements, that we should apply a scientific and technical and thorough criteria for what we say, what we show, and how we measure things. And it's important, and it's also a must to get NGOs and the academia involved in this whole process. Who will pay for it? Well, we asked this question to some of the organizations that have already been, that have already started working along this path, Carrefour, JBS, and McDonald's, and their answer was the cost will come down as we reach an economy of scale. Of course, today to produce sustainable, to buy sustainable beef, they are paying more to the producers to set themselves away from their competitors. In the future, if we make a definition that is inclusive, well, because of the economy of scale, costs will come down. I believe that today there is a blank slate a clean slate, and we should write on it, because if we don't write on it, somebody else will write on it, and maybe what they write on it, we won't like it. So this is the last slide, and I invite you to share, share with us the work on these new processes, which may be requirements, which may see, be seen as another matter of concern, but clearly if we don't do it, if we don't work together, if we don't think together, if we don't get into it, Sooner or later, we will be, we won't feel well about it. Thank you very much for your presentation. Now we have time for questions and answers. And this panel will be led by Mr. Minervino. Let's see if there are questions. My first question is how can grain suppliers contribute to beef sustainability with conservation agriculture certified by APRESID. Just the, it is quite simple. You just have to follow APRESID guidelines and prove that you are producing based on those guidelines. As Victor Tonelli has just said, Argentinian projection per se already meets most of those guidelines. You just have to communicate this good success story. But maybe apprentice members should answer this question. I'd like to point out the following. When you speak about sustainability, and this is out of ignorance, at least the ignorance I have before I started to work with environmentalists in Aprecid, usually people believe that environmental problems are very much related to GHG emissions or to water problems, but the issue is much more comprehensive. It goes beyond whether we are producing in the wet pampas, in areas where there are no forests, or 
whether we are having our beef production in areas such as Chaco, where we do have deforestation, and the big grain production is related to not only to the environment, which is not a minor thing, water footprint and carbon footprint, but also social aspect. Sooner or later, we will have to realize and we will, we will have to be accountable for what we are doing as business people. I'd like to emphasize your point. The question is, how can grain producers contribute sustainability to beef production? I think we should tell people that certification, I mean that cattle breeders can also achieve certification and this would be a way of integrating grain to beef production. Cattle breeding can also be certified today. When this program started, this was not possible. It's a great breakthrough and I just wanted to tell you about this. Are there other questions? What requirements are there in Europe to certify sustainability of beef production? So what are the requirements in Europe to certify sustainability in beef production? Well, on paper, there is a lot of it. All beef buyers in the market come with their demands, they already know what they want and what they require, so they require quite a lot. My issue is cost. We're now starting to see price differentiation with those productions that have a sustainability certification. Since I have the mic, I'd like to argue with you, Victor Tonelli. You you say, who's going to pay for this? And you said, well, in the first stage, the end consumers will pay for it. But I believe that the cost should be divided into three. The first part, well, we will generate efficiencies and our production costs will be lower. But then there's another part, which is scalability. Of course, I totally agree with you on that. But I don't think that we should strategically try to look for a scenario where you say, well, the cost will be absorbed throughout the chain. What are we going to wait for? Are we going to wait for the whole production to be sustainable or for part of our production to be sustainable and maybe in the longer term reach the whole of it? For this strategy to be successful, somebody has to pay for it. Even though we may we may pay part of the cost. Consumers will also pay for a part of it. I agree with you, but I'd like to add something to that. Besides efficiency, productivity, and price differentiation, we should also consider improved bank rates. In the financial system, there are increasing demands for loans for companies who are starting to meet some sustainability guidelines. This is being developed right now and it might contribute to higher costs that you will have to incur in when you go for certification. But I would say that there are several tools to be developed that might contribute to minimize that higher cost. I'd like to add something that I didn't say at the beginning. The association represented by my colleague 
told them that it was very important for them to have APRE seed certification in the Certified Agricultural Program. This helped make things easier for them. Absolutely. There are no more questions. So we're going to close this session. I'd like to thank the speakers and the whole audience. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank Andrea Pasinato, Jorge de Saja, Victor Tonelli.